Okay, welcome to test one in the 2019 series, The Edge in Economics Revision. We'll be taking lots of separate topics across the A-level syllabus, different boards, asking five multiple choice questions that you can have a go at. And obviously we'll go through the answers as well to check and test your understanding. This first one is on microeconomics and to do with revenues and costs and profits. Here we go. First question, what is the formula for calculating average fixed cost and the formula for calculating average revenue. Have a go at this question, press the pause button and just press play when you want to go through the answer. So the correct answer to question one is C. Average fixed cost is total fixed cost divided by output. Average revenue is total revenue divided by output or revenue per unit or the price of course the average revenue is essentially the demand curve so the answer to question one is c here's question two the diagram shows a firm that aims to maximize their sales revenue and the question is which outcome which outcome is correct for this firm options obviously a b c and d have a go press the pause button and then just press play when you want to check through your answer. Okay, so total revenue rising, then, init then initially rising, then falling. Total cost increasing at an increasing rate. What's the, uh, the firm is aiming to maximize revenue, which is gonna be output T. The answer is D. You maximize revenue at the top of the total revenue curve, that's output T. Now at this output, the firm's total revenues still exceed their costs. The break-even output is a little to the right of output T. So some supernormal profits are being made, but they're not being maximised. It's not the biggest vertical distance between total revenue and total cost, which is output S. So the answer to question two is D. Let's move on to question three. Other factors remaining the same. An increase in variable costs for a business that faces a downward sloping uh, demand curve and marginal revenue curve is likely to lead to what? Take a moment to check out the options A, B, C and D. Okay, the correct answer is B, fall in output and a fall in profit. Uh, increase in variable costs, if you can visualize this, causes the marginal and average cost of production to shift upwards. Other things remaining the same, assuming the demand conditions remain the same, that's going to cause the equilibrium output to fall. So the answer has to be B or C. And uh, that's going to cause uh, the price of uh, the increase in cost will cause the firm to increase price. But the profit will fall because the gap between revenue and cost per unit will narrow, leading to a fall in profit per unit. So it is B. Option C, a fall in output, yes. A fall in profit, yes, but not a fall in price. The increase in cost will cause the price to go up. That's why it's not C. Two more questions left on this uh, mini-test. Here's question four. What would result in an increase in labour costs per unit of output? Take a moment or two to have a go at question four. So the correct answer to question four is D. Definition time, unit labour costs are labour costs per unit of output, and that's determined by the total labour cost of the business divided by the output. So the answer is D, because if wages are rising more quickly than productivity, then you're essentially paying workers a lot more relative to how productive they've been than the unit labour cost of what they've been supplying will have to have gone up. We can ignore other costs in this question because this question is only about labour costs. Uh, just looking at the other options, and uh, uh, look at A, for example, an increase in wages which is less than the increase in productivity that would bring down new labour costs. A fall in wages with labour productivity remaining the same would also reduce unit labour costs. And an increase in output, which is greater than the increase in wages, again, would reduce unit labour costs. One more question. Slightly trickier one. This is a real test for you. The diagram shows a firm's total cost curve. Total cost. At which level of output will the firm's marginal cost be equal to the average cost? 
Now this will take you a few moments. Have a go at this question, question number five. What do we think for question five? Looks like a complex diagram with lots of gradients and curves moving around the place. The answer to question five is C. That's the output where firm's marginal cost would be equal to average cost. Let's just work through the answer. The gradient of the total cost curve, if you like the path or the shape of the total cost curve, is determined by marginal cost. So initially, from output 0 to output B, marginal cost is actually falling because the gradient of that line is getting shallower. It's reducing. But after output B, the gradient starts to rise. In other words, marginal cost is starting to increase. Output C has the lowest average cost. If you use the dotted lines from the origin, that's the shallowest gradient of that dotted line when it's just tangential to total cost at output C. Can you see that? Now that, that gradient is average cost. So we know that that's the minimum of average cost at output C. We should also know that marginal cost always, always intersects average cost at the minimum of average cost. MC always cuts AC at the minimum of AC. So output C must be where the firm's marginal cost is equal to its average cost. So there we go, there's five multiple choice questions on revenue and cost. Hope you did okay on those ones. Loads more edge revision videos as we head towards the 2019 exams.